Hi y'all, this is Genevieve with Belly Down and Moonbeams. Well, I've made all the videos and actually they're pretty good, but I kept saying hello and goodbye at the end. So if you hear a lot of good hellos and goodbyes because I haven't figured out that kind of editing yet, sorry, but I'm gonna put them all together and you will have one long video. Okay, bye. Hi y'all, this is Genevieve with Belly Down and Moonbeams. How are y'all doing? I'm doing really well. Happy Yule. Happy Winter Solstice. For once, I'm in my living room. You may never see my living room again. But this is where I'm going to have a Yule party tonight. And I hope to have another one um, on the 31st to close out Yule. Just like we're opening Yule, we're going to close it out. Um, now I'm going to give you a quote from um, a book called The Pagan Family. And I can't pronounce a woman's name. It's so where Smith. No, so, but let me first tell you about Yule and winter solstice. This is the shortest day of the year, at least for daylight. It's not shorter by, you know, less than 24 hours, obviously. But it's shorter by the daylight hours. As you notice, it is about... Uh, what time is it? It is 523 and it is already turning off dark. Look at that. So this is the shortest day of the year. And the reason we've start, we started having this holiday years ago is, I mean, like thousands of years ago, is because of our fear from the days getting shorter, but also to celebrate our belief that the, that the winter will end and spring will return and the days will get longer. So I'm going to give you this quote now. Now we stop to wonder, start to wonder, will this continue? Will the earth grow darker and colder as the sun disappears into the south until only darkness is left? But at Yule, a wonderful thing happens. The sun stops its decline and for a few days it rises in about the same place. This is a crucial time the cusp between events. The sun stands still and everyone waits for the turning. In our heads, we know the light will return. But in the darkness of winter, can we be sure? Do our hearts believe what our heads tell us? Will the light keep its promises? We all have moments of darkness when we don't know much deeper we will go before the light starts to return, or even if it will. The world has moments too. It understands us and lives as we do. The sun does start north again and the light comes back. In the world, in our lives, the light comes back. This is indeed something we're celebrating. And it has been celebrated throughout the Northern Hemisphere in remarkably similar ways. So, <clears throat> the O King and the Holy King. The Oak King rules over the dark part of the year and from midsummer to Yule, he is a god of the waning tree. All Yule, he surrenders his life to the young light Oak King, god of the waxing year and his twin who rules over the light part of the year. So they each rule for half the year, depending upon which it is. And in a way, the pictures I see of the Oak King and the Holly King remind me of the Scrooge story of the, coast, of the ghost of Christmas present. They're celebratory and happy. Um, the evergreens, which we all use, represents everlasting life and were traditionally hung around doorways and windows. Each has a symbolism of its own. Mistletoe, is, as we talked about previously, is greatly revered by the Druids as a healer and a protector. It is carefully cut to ensure it never touches the earth so it doesn't fall on the ground. It connects the, the, the worlds, the underworld and the present world. It lives between the worlds, between sky, heaven, and earth. The white berries and mistletoe represent the fertile white semen, yuck, of the life-giving male, which is where kissing in the mistletoe comes from. So, see, we celebrate 
semen as much as we celebrate women and their fertility because you need both to to produce babies that's why witchcraft is a fertility religion it celebrates both the male and the female the yin and the yang holly is also an evergreen of protection holly spikle bristles are supposed to repel unwanted spirits Newborn babies used to be sprinkled with holly water, which is where holy water came from. And it's especially potent if it's left under a full moon. Holly is sacred to hold, H-O-L-L-E, which is the Germanic underworld goddess similar to Isis or Hecate and symbolizes everlasting life, goodwill, and potent life energy. And its red berries represent the feminine blood. Together, mistletoe and holly represent the sacred marriage of this time of the year with the rebirth of the sun or the sun. Ivy, evergreen symbol of immortality and resurrection. It grows in a spiral reminding us of reincarnation and rebirth. It was sacred to Osiris where his death and resurrection was a central theme in Egyptian religion. Sacred also to Dionysus, god of vegetation, blossoming, and the return of spring. And you. Now, I don't have any you here, but it was um, a tree of regeneration and rebirth as no other. It sends up new trees from the roots, and it grows in a very great age. It goes really fast. And it's deeply connected to the spirit realms. And at Yuletide, or Yule, it has been customary to make a decoration using two hoops, one thrust throughout the other, and bound with evergreens, holly, and ivy, and apples, which are have been reserved for this occasion, things like that. Um, at the bottom, there is a bunch of mistletoe tied, and the whole is suspended in the middle of the room. It was the center of attention. That's where hanging mistletoe came from. Every berry on the mistletoe bears the promise of a kiss. And for every kiss given or taken, a berry is removed. When all the berries were removed, the kissing had to stop. A lot, and sometimes people died from that. So don't eat too many of the berries. It was traditional to make wreaths from evergreens. The wheel of life as an evergreen. Sorry about that. I'm telling myself to do things. That's what I do when I'm trying to, to plan my day. These were hung on doors or laid horizontally and decorated with candle. That's where the Advent wreath came from that the Christians came use. The Yule tree was, um, they, the Roman priests would cut down a pine tree and decorate it with boughs of evergreen trees and bushes and pots. This was a sign of Saturnalia, life and rebirth in the festival, what well, was the festival of Saturnalia. Pagan families would bring a live tree into the home so the wood spirits would have a place to keep warm because you didn't want the spirits or elves or whatever to get cold. Food and treats were hung on the branches for the spirits to eat. So this is where hanging ornaments came from. They were actually fruit and berries and treats for the wood elves. And because this is the darkest day of the year, it's also the festival of light out of darkness. And the tradition of lighting candles is ever popular. The candles were red, green, and gold of the returning sun. So that's why we have those colors at Christmas. Um, a little bit later, I'm going to show you what I have done in my house. I'm gonna show you the food I've done. I've prepared, traditionally you use things like squashes, apples, oranges, things that are in season. And you also do things that you preserve like dried fruit. So what I do on the 31st will be different. I'm actually gonna bake some fruit bread. And a little bit later, I'm going to make a Yuletide charm with a spoon. And we're gonna have a dinner tonight, a uh, pumpkin soup. I'll show you that, a Yule cake. I'm kind of cheating and I'm using some 
making some crescent rolls with some cheese, some cranberry sauce, and some buttered rum. Because of course, eggnog and buttered rum were traditional drinks from back in the day. So I will be back in a little bit. I'm gonna put this all together and you're gonna to get to see it all. Okay. And bye. these are my Yule decorations. Here is a Yule wreath. And here is my altar to Fortuna. And of course she has a um, small sacrifice of rum. Here is another wreath and some mistletoe. Mm -hmm. the and my Yule, my um, altar. And some more greenery. Oh, there was mistletoe too. My altar with lots of rum for the gods and the goddesses. My table decoration. And finally, my wreath that I made last night. And if you notice, I have a broom upside down by the door to keep negative energies out. Bye, y'all. See you tomorrow. No, I don't want a video for And this is what the food turned out like. This is the Yule cake, isn't it pretty? Okay, everybody have one. And here are your bay leaves, our bay leaves. So we're writing what we want. What we want. Like the power of a million dollars. Like I'm writing NOLA on mine. Not NOLA. They know what I mean. And then I'm gonna write one for money. Then I'm good. Money and Nola. Yeah, how many can we do? How many can you need? <laughs> Give me a tree. Yeah. Yeah, no joke. And we have to pick up our, our things because the dogs will eat them all. And then we, we hang on to ours and we go outside and we burn them. I've got my Athame over there and I'll light the fire and then I'll call this, I'll cast a circle and then we'll go and burn. And y'all might be on video, but it'll be dark. Lots of things. <clears throat> I'm on number four. Is that cool? Yeah. I would say after about four, you might want to stop. Okay. Uh oh. It's still going. Now I am going to go and light the fire, which I've already prepared earlier, so I didn't have to do this in the jar. So she thinks I'd like to fall apart in There's a hole there. <laughs> okay. And now I'm gonna cast the circle. Mostly I'm gonna do it quiet because a lot of these are things that aren't to be shared, but just give me a moment. Okay, now we have written our intentions for this year, our wishes for this year, and now we're gonna go put them in the fire. I'll go first and everybody else can follow along.
didn't chew that. <laughs> well, I didn't lose it. That one's not coming through. Okay. Real short. It's going good. Come on, ladies. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to go. Can you just move? Is this building? I got my stuff. It'll burn. And if it didn't, I'll come out tomorrow. It's bleeding. You can go through the top, too. I thank the God and the Goddess for answering our desires and bringing it to fruition. So much it be. So everyone, happy Yule. Bye. Hi, y'all. This is Genevieve with Belladonna Moonbeams. And this is it. You've seen my movie. It is by far not perfect. There's things you didn't see. Next, next year or next time, I'll do better. And I'll do better at how I put it all together and how I figured it out and just all those things. But this was my first time. So, I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Happy Yule. Bye.